live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host Justin Warren, and you're watching theCUBE live from VMworld 2019 here in Moscow, New York. Actually, the 10th year that we've had theCUBE at this event. Uh, joining me on the program, I have Brad Anderson and Keith Norby, both with NetApp. Uh, Brad is an executive vice president, and Keith is director of strategic alliances. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you. So, Brad, you know, I've had the pleasure of working with VMware since 2002. It's one of the highlights of my career in tech has been watching that, that growth of virtualization, you know, a, a company that you know, was about 100 people when I first started watching them, and that wave of virtualization that just had ripples throughout the industry was really impressive. But I didn't actually get to come to this show until 2010, oh. so as I said, our 10th year of the show. You were one of the few that were at the inaugural event, and this is the 16th year of it, so just give us a little bit of a, a look back and you know, what you've seen changing. NetApp, of course, you know, a long, long time partner of, uh, of, of, of VMware's. Absolutely, um, it was like 2003, 2004, it was at a hotel in San Diego, and uh, there's probably uh, about a thousand people there, but I don't think they were planning a thousand, so it was the longest <laughs> kind of room and we had people that were just kind of a mile down and, and finally uh, uh, the, the comment was, hey, could we knock down a wall and kind of get people a little bit closer? So, uh, no, that was a long time ago. Uh, and in fact, uh, it was uh, Diane Mendel, I had an opportunity to give a keynote and I think there was another keynote from uh, IBM. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry they didn't invite you back on stage this morning, <laughs> but you know, uh, big well, a, a little big, bigger show today. Yeah, a little, little bigger. I think we're somewhere in the ballpark of 20,000 is what this show's been for about the last five years. Um, conversations very different oh today. God. As uh, I, 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 I've made commentary, we're in the post VM era uh, today. VMs are no longer the center of the right. conversation, and you know, multi-cloud is something that oh they put God. out there, which is the story I've been hearing from NetApp for many years. Software company living in all of these cloud environments. So talk to us a little bit about how, how that relationship with VMware and where, where NetApp sits in the ecosystem has changed. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, VMware has, uh, NetApp and VMware has been a great partner for a long, long time, and, and uh, and, and NetApp strategy is clearly hybrid multi-cloud. Uh, when you think about you know, private clouds today, uh, VMware has a, a, a huge footprint in that space, so they continue to be super important. Uh, we probably have a little more expansive definition of hybrid. Uh, to us, hybrid is uh, private cloud and public cloud in all kinds of combinations. And, uh, but we also, also strongly believe in multi-cloud, and so uh, we are, you know, we're driving very hard for the hybrid multi-cloud, letting customers basically start anywhere they want to with any cloud provider, on-prem, in the cloud, and, and have that, you know, that control of data irrespective of, and move at their own pace. Yeah, so VMware has long been one of those places where everybody can meet. So you yes. mentioned knocking down walls. And VMware is one of the few companies that actually succeeded in doing that and having pe people be able to work with partners in other eras, yeah. there was often a lot of, of, uh, of fighting between different vendors. Whereas here, it's, well, whatever you as a customer wants to do, we will be there to do that with you. And NetApp's another one of those companies. It's like, yeah. you, if, if you have some data, we will help you manage it no matter where it is. Yes. So tell, tell us about something that, what are you doing right now in this, in this new world where, as Stu mentions, it's, it's a post-VM world. Yep. So in this post-VM world, how do you manage your data in that post-VM world? Well, it's 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 um, it's it's managing. First of all, I mean, we, we really strongly believe about choice, and so we're going to manage, uh, you know, you know, the data and 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 start where the customer starts. I mean, we are not advocating that they have to start in cloud. They have to be on prem. There's an orderly path, because depending on the customer, they're all going to take a very different path. Hmm. And 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 so what we want to do is give them control of their data, irrespective of the path, and allow them to move on that path. But we're seeing at NetApp that it's it's about the data, it's beyond the data. That's increasingly about applications. And so, uh, you know, you heard a little bit about uh, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, that's that's something we strongly feel as well, and providing a, a, a set of tools to provide choice where, uh, you know, you know, uh, independent of the cloud. You know, same Kubernetes services, same different tools, you know, same tool set, same uh, services on-prem or in the cloud. 
Yeah, and, and NetApp has has a, a strong cloud presence. I mean, some Very of the things much. like cloud volumes, um, some of the the other acquisitions that you've made to, that help you with the the cloud journey. Right. Like some of NetApp's offerings are, are really strong. No, very, very much so, and, and we think we can provide a, 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 a superior customer experience, but then if the customer wants to use a, you know, a broad industry set of tools, we support that as well. We are supporting the customer on his journey with the tools as they uh, determine. So Keith, tell us about some of the strategic partnerships that help NetApp to, to be able to partner with these different customers and, and to bring different vendors together to help them solve customer problems. Yeah, well it takes a lot of them to uh, meet the customer needs. Uh, the, as you saw today in the landscape folks that are on the solutions exchange floor, um, it takes not just a partnership between NetApp and VMware, but NetApp and VMware plus Veeam. NetApp and VMware plus um, a, a ton of other folks. Cisco, as an example, longtime partner of ours on FlexPod. Mm. And you know the fact that we're doing memory accelerated FlexPod takes you know something that has had a long tradition of VMware excellence with Cisco uh, and is now at an order of magnitude faster than anything you'd want for apps uh, that need you know, scale up performance, uh, all the service capabilities of ONTAP for things like Metro Cluster and beyond. Yep. Mm. So Keith, I you know, remember back years ago, it was you know, you know, who has the most integrations and <laughs> uh, with, with VMware and you know, it was, uh, you know, all the VAAI and VVOLs and all of those pieces and NetApp always you know, was right at the top of the list you know, working uh, in those environments. Maybe, maybe Brad, if you want to answer this. But you know, today, how do you, you know, give, give us some examples of kind of that joint engineering work yeah. that goes on between NetApp and VMware. Obviously there's, there's you know, bundled solutions like FlexPod that's you know, vSphere plus NetApp app yep. uh, in there, but you know, at that engineering level, you know, wh wh where does the rubber hit the road? Yeah, it's funny, because I've been at every VMworld except two, and so I've been with you in the sense I've seen the landscape of these innovations where Steve Harrod and some others would talk about the movie previews of things like VAI and VASA providers all coming, and that was the big thing you'd focus on. Uh, now it's less about that, and I think it's more about what Brad has kind of brought to NetApp in, in the focus on simplicity. Now the funny part about simplicity is that to deliver simplicity, much like the engineering detail to deliver Tesla or an iPhone, is extraordinary. Mm. So the work isn't less, in fact the work is more, and you pre-configuring or pre-wiring as much as possible, the, the work we started to do over a year ago between um, George Curry and our CEO and Sanjay Poonin, uh, got together, we started planning on some multi-cloud plans, and uh, that's where you see a lot of our persistence in cloud volumes on VMC. You see us having a VMware validated design on NetApp HCI for VMware Private Cloud, uh, VDI solutions, and these are meant to draw NSX in, and when has NetApp ever had an NSX integration? All of a sudden now we have NSX in integrations to make that easier to bring on board. We have vRealize integrations, so you can build a self-serve ca uh, portal catalog, um, just like they talked about today. And the list goes on and on. So it's, it's funny how it's less, the features are important, but what's more important is trying to make this as simple as possible for people to consume, and then for the folks that need things like scale up apps and, and services, or they need uh, the same cloud volumes in this data fabric on any one of the hyperscalers, we have really the only end-to-end -end story on that, and that's what makes the VMware Plus NetApp thing work really well. So how do you balance the, the flexibility of being able to solve multiple customer problems, and, and they all have different needs, yeah. so how do you balance the simplicity with that, with that complexity? And it was mentioned by Pat in the keynote as well, that you've got this kind of tension between, I, I need to be able to do everything flexibly, but that can sometimes lead to complexity. So how do you change that to become simple for customers to use? Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, the biggest thing, it's a, it's a, it's a design input. I mean, if, if you start out with uh, just trying to make the technology all it can be with a, in a, you know, one particular cloud or one particular partner, then it becomes very difficult as you try to expand it to multiple partners. And uh, because it's about choice, we're kind of thinking about that right up front. And so, if it's a design input, uh, it, puts, it puts, as Keith said, it puts some burden on the technical team but it is a much more powerful solution if, we, uh, if, if you can pull it off. And that's been a big part, and I think it kind of starts with this mentality that you know, it's about choice, and we got to make simplicity a now part of the value proposition rather than an afterthought, as it you know, has maybe historically has been. Yeah. Um, 
wonder if we could talk a little bit about customers because yes. you know the, the the message I hear this morning is you know you talk multi cloud yep. you talk cloud native yeah. uh, there's a lot of change in the industry uh, you know I, I'm participating in a couple of you know career advice events yeah. because <laughs> you know I remember back 10 years ago it was oh my gosh if I'm a server admin I need to learn to be virtualization then it was cloud yeah. you know uh, architects but uh, they're, they're, we we know that that change in the industry is constant so you know what are some of those key drivers when you're talking to customers in in general and specifically when you talk about in, in engaging in partnership with VMware? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it starts with uh, people just recognizing uh, even if people haven't moved to cloud today, that tends to be their primary strategy. I mean, if, in a recent uh, uh, you know, survey, I think uh, we found 98% of the customers said cloud is their strategy. However, 53% said still on-prem is their primary compute center. So, they're, you know, they're not there yet and so, but because that's their strategy, then you know we have to respect that, and, and so so uh, you know increasingly you're seeing at NetApp we 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 lead with cloud, uh, even though we know customers aren't quite ready there, but but we align to that long-term vision, mm -hmm. but then our 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 our, our strategy is made up of helping them modernize what they have currently on-prem helping build private clouds with the same services they have in public cloud, and then let them have the complete, absolute choice of what public cloud or multiple public clouds they want, and design with that, with, you know, that full spectrum in mind, knowing they could start anywhere on that, on that scale. Yeah, the customers ultimately are going to dictate to the market what is real. And I think over time, POs sort of vet who's right on this stuff. And uh, so history's a great lesson. Uh, teacher of all those things. For, you know, for, for me it seems less, less about how many different things you can offer. And, and as you see, um, whether we're at VMworld or we're at uh, Red Hat Summit, we're at AWS reInvent or um, you know, KubeCon, every, every, every vector turn of the customer's prism on this will say something slightly different. But I think in general, categorically, if you look at it, you can start to just you know, glean what you think are the real requirements. And by the way, the, the real requirements are not all technical. You know, I think what, what gets lost on folks is that there is a lot of operational political factors, probably political factors a lot more than what a lot of people think. You know, they're just talking about what the, t what the speed is to refactor apps or to migrate apps. Frankly, there's just a lot of politics that goes with that. There's a lot of just stuff to work through. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think simplicity is so important because of those non-technical reasons. Simplicity resonates across the board. Yeah, but I would say, you have to have simplicity with capabilities. Yeah, I, I mean, just yeah. one of the things you talk about, right, if I modernize some application, well, the people that were using that application, they were probably complaining about that old one, <laughs> but at least they, they do have to relearn yeah. that, yep. that, that yeah. new one. So we're going to have some exciting announcements tomorrow, so everyone kind of check out tomorrow's uh, stuff that we'll announce with VMware, with NetApp tomorrow. Uh, we're here at the, at the show floor, and we'll be showcasing some of those things. We can't give away too much of that today, but, um, you know, we think the future is bright, and we, together with with VMware, you know, this partnership I think has a lot of upside. And like you said, we've had a, we've had a 17-year history with you know hundreds of thousands of customers together, and an install base that goes back to like you said the very beginning. Um, I remember back to the very beginning of the ecosystem. NetApp was one of the strongest players in that market, um, and and since then it's evolved beyond just NFS. Well, hopefully, Brad, we can get you on a keynote for uh, in, in another 10 years well, and you'll maybe. be able to, <laughs> we can knock that wall down for you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, uh, great. Want to give you both uh, the, the final word. Uh, you know, so, so many big themes going on. Uh, you know, takeaways that, that you want people to have from VMworld 2019, Brad? Well, I think the biggest takeaway is that, uh, just like the show today, uh, you didn't hear a whole lot about virtualization. It's moving to containerize, and, and we at NetApp uh, view that, you know, we, we support all virtualized environments on-prem across the cloud. We are moving to supporting all containerized application environments on-premises and cloud and it's about choices and, and combinations of both, but uh, keeping data control. Yeah, I'd say for me, it's, it's, called, it's really the power of the, uh, of, of, better, of, of the better together. You know, to me, it's nobody's great apart. It takes really an ecosystem of players to kind of work together for the customer benefit, and the one that we've demonstrated with VMware, with NetApp plus VMware, has been a powerful one for well, well over 17 years, and the proof's in the pudding in terms of the joint customers that have a ton of loyalty to both of us, and they want us just to work it out. So, you know, whether, you're, whether your allegiance on one side of the Kubernetes, Kubernetes battle or another, or you're on one side of uh, anyone's you know, storage choice or another, you know, I think the customers want 
NetApp and VMware to work us out and, and, and come up with solutions, and we've done that. And now what, wait for the second act of this to come out. We'll start that tomorrow. Keith and Brad, thank you so much. Uh, if you couldn't tell by the sirens on the street, we are live here from <laughs> San Francisco at Moscone North. Uh, lots more coverage, three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. For Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.